I'm supposed to be smarter than the microphone, but most days I'm not. Um, with that said, um, it's a poor way to introduce myself, I suppose. Uh, I am Pastor Peter Ill. I get to serve at Trinity in the Millstop. And this year, as we are focusing on the theme of waiting with Isaiah, uh, the pastors in the area are taking some turns, traveling around, getting to meet some new folks. And so this evening, I get to come down to Columbia and spend some time with you, thinking about waiting with prayer. Uh, meanwhile, Pastor Krenz is in Mascuda, uh, meeting some people and sharing God's word with them. And, and hopefully Pastor Kazeman's in Millstock. We'll find out. Um, but, um, so, uh, the pastors from Millstock and Columbia and Mascuda and Freeburg are taking turns at traveling around. And so you'll meet a, a, a variety of new faces in the next couple of weeks. Um, this evening, we especially focus on the season of Advent and waiting as we wait and pray. And so this evening, we get to wait and pray together. Uh, and we will begin with our first hymn, The Advent of Our King. the day which the Lord has made. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God shines forth. Our God shall come, he does not keep silence. Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Shower, O heavens, from above and let the skies rain down righteousness. Let the earth open, that salvation may sprout forth. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Mercifully hear, O Lord, the prayers of your people, that through the manifold changes in this world may be comforted by the visitation of your loving kindness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Blessed be the Lord, my rock, 
who trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle. He is my steadfast love and my fortress, my stronghold and my deliverer, my shield and he in whom I take refuge, who subdues peoples under me. O Lord, what is man that you regard him, or the son of man that you think of him? Man is like a breath. His days are like a passing shadow. Bow your heavens, O Lord, and come down. Touch the mountains so that they smoke. Flash forth the lightning and scatter them. Send out your arrows and rout them. Stretch out your hand from on high. Rescue me and deliver me from the many waters, from the hand of foreigners, whose mouths speak lies and whose right hand is a right hand of falsehood. I will sing a new song to you, O God. Upon the ten-stringed harp I will play to you, who gives victory to kings, who rescues David his servant from the cruel sword. Rescue me and deliver me from the hand of foreigners, whose mouths speak lies, and whose right hand is a right hand of falsehood. May our sons in their youth be like plants full grown, our daughters like corner pillars cut for the structure of a palace. May our granaries be full, providing all kinds of produce. May our sheep bring forth thousands and ten thousands in our fields. May our cattle be heavy with young, suffering no mishap or failure in bear. May there be no cry of distress in our streets. Blessed are the people to whom such blessings fall. Blessed are the people whose God is the Lord. The Old Testament reading is from Isaiah, the 64th chapter. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down that the mountains might quake at your presence. As when fire kindles brushwood, and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversary, and that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome things that we did not look for, you came down. The mountains quaked at your presence. From of old, no one has heard or perceived by the ear. No one has seen a God besides you, who acts for those who wait for him. You meet him who joyfully works righteousness. Those who remember you in your ways, behold, you were angry, and we sinned. In our sins we have been a long time, and shall we be saved? We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a polluted garment. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls upon your name, who rouses himself to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us and have us made us melt in the hand of our iniquity. But now, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Be not so terribly angry, O Lord, and remember not iniquity forever. Behold, please look, we are all your people. This is the word of the Lord. We rise. The Holy Gospel reading is from Mark, the 13th chapter. 
But in those days after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken, and then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory, and then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts out its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates Truly, I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But concerning that day or that hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard. Keep awake. For you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey. When he leaves home and puts his servants in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to stay awake. Therefore, stay awake. For you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening or at midnight. Or when the rooster crows, or in the morning, lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. And what I say to you, I say to all, stay awake. This is the word of the Lord. Be Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch. This, this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. He shall reign as a king and deal wisely and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. This is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. This is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. We now confess together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and of earth. Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated as we sing the hymn of the day.
grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. As we think about waiting for the Lord's return in Advent, and as we wait with prayer, Isaiah gives us a prayer. Here he provides a prayer for God's people that he would help them as they wait to have the sorrows and the injustices of the world put to an end. So they ask for the Lord's help. Thinking about asking for help reminds me of these words from author Chris Davis. A bank teller in Dayton, Ohio, dials 911 for medical intervention when a man in the lobby, Robert Strank, nearly passes out and asks the teller to call for help. Police in Des Moines, Iowa, respond to a panicked request from William Klein after his 10-year-old son, Brian, handcuffed the two together, not realizing that William kept the cuffs from his old security job but not the keys. In Pretoria, South Africa, passerby and police came to the aid of a man who had been stuck in a car for an hour and a half, banging on the windows and pleading for help. In each of these accounts, you would assume that the presence of those arriving to help would be a good thing, wouldn't you? Yet, in each case, there is more to the story. The arrival of paramedics to the Huntington Bank would have been great news if Robert Strank had, for inexplicable reasons, not made a second request of the teller, this time handing her a note requesting cash. Whether or not the fainting spell was part of the attempted bank robbery, Strank didn't realize that the 911 call would bring paramedics and police officers. Once his medical status was given the all clear, the officers took Strank into custody. Meanwhile, the officers who successfully uncuffed Brian from his dad had a good laugh with the pair about this innocent mishap on Father's Day of all days. After they left, they ran William's name through their police database per their department's protocols. The search revealed that the father had two outstanding warrants for his arrest. So they went back inside to cuff him for real this time. And what of the poor man stuck in the car in South Africa? As it turns out, he was a thief posing as a car guard who used a jamming device to enter the car to grab any valuables that he might find there, but that BMW had an auto lock feature that kicked in and left the man with no way to get out. When the car owner returned, she granted the man's request for help, at which point the police promptly arrested him. These people asked for help, and they got more than they bargained for. The help they received was more than they had asked for. And this prayer of Isaiah in Isaiah 64 at first seems like God's people, even you and I, get more than we ask for. And to be honest, doesn't sound like good news at all. This prayer of waiting starts with a request. Oh God, show up, rip open the heavens, rend them open, and come down here to where we are. Bring your presence into your creation and set things right. Isaiah teaches us to pray that God would bring his presence right here to where we are, that God would give us help. So far, so good. Throughout Scripture and the Old Testament, God's presence is linked with fire. From the burning bush, where God appeared to Moses, to the pillar of fire with which God led the people of Israel out of Egypt, to the burning coal that touched Isaiah's lips when he was in the throne room of God, God is linked with fire. And now, Isaiah says, the fire burns up the brushwood and even takes the calm water and stirs it up to a rolling boil. And here comes God's presence answering this prayer, opening up the heavens and coming down to his people. The Lord had revealed his presence to the enemies of his people. He shook the mountain, most notably Mount Sinai, where God met with Moses and gave him the Ten Commandments and the law. He is, after all, the only God, and he is the one who shows up to help his people. So far, so good. 
until the people, led by Isaiah in this prayer, confess that they had sinned against God's ways, and God was angry, and rightfully so. How can they be saved? The other shoe dropped. The sinful people of God who had tolerated idolatry even in their midst, even having idolatry foisted on them by their kings and by their leaders, they were unclean, polluted, but not just dirty. God's law had a focus on cleanliness of his people that makes them unique, that applied to their food because they didn't eat like the people around them. It applied to their clothing because they wore different clothes. It applied to their haircuts, to their funeral practices, and to many other things that they did. They were called to be unlike the people of the nations around them, but the people of God stopped being clean and unique. They blended in with the others around them. Truly, they were unclean, and even their righteous actions were filthy. The wind of their sin swirled around them, blowing them away like shriveled up fall leaves. The Lord their God is the potter, and they are the clay. The Lord had every right to be angry with them because of their sin. And you and I are no better than them. Who are we? to cry out to God for rescue. Why would we ask God to come here where we are? If he comes here and sees us, he will see our sin. Not only will his judgment come against his, our sinful enemies, but we too should be judged for our sinfulness. The full weight of God's law should be directed against us for our sin. Even among good church-going people, even the ones who make it out to the midweek Advent services, there are no excuses. We have flirted with idolatry. Maybe not with the false gods of Baal and Asherah, but to the gods of wealth and convenience and self-centeredness. From time to time we have even bent the knee in worship. The things that we think of as righteous deeds are contaminated by our sinfulness. Even when we try really hard to do good, we can't help but to show our sin in those actions. If we call on God to visit us and to rescue us, sinners like us deserve his condemnation and his anger. Here we are in Advent, a time when God calls his people, when God calls you to repent and to turn from your sin. Indeed, your righteous deeds are like filthy, polluted rags, and you shrivel up, and the wind of sin should blow you away. Cry out to God. Pray this Advent that the Lord your God come to you, visiting you not with his anger, but with his love. You are able to expect him to visit you in love because he has done it before. In days of old, the Lord visited his people starting in a manger in the little city of Bethlehem. The Lord kept visiting his people, rescuing them and setting creation right in his miracles and in his authoritative teaching so that everyone said, This Jesus, he is the one who teaches with all authority. And then... In his great love for his people, he visited them again, dying on the cross and rising again, showing that he is the first of those risen from the dead. He has come to forgive us our trespasses through his death and resurrection. Even as he ascended up into heaven, the angels among the disciples said that he would come again in the same way that he had gone up from them. Indeed, he will descend from heaven with the cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, with the sound of the trumpet of God. And that, that will not be a sound of judgment, but the sound of rescue. Jesus, your Lord, will rend the heavens and come down, showing you his nail-marked hands, the wound in his side, and say, for your sins, I died, and for your forgiveness, I was wounded. 
You are the potter, and he is the clay. And like a potter who would remake and perfect a crumbled or broken pot, he has restored you and perfected you. As you live in the middle of this world where it seems that no one cries out to God and where many people and institutions seem to be God's enemies, boldly, confidently cry out, Come, Lord Jesus, the Lord who came to his people in a manger and on a cross, will hear your prayer and he will open up the heavens and he will come down to rescue you and to save you. And that is exactly the answer to this bold prayer that you need. Thanks be to God that he hears this prayer and answers it in love. Come, Lord Jesus, indeed. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We now sing together the canticle. Please stand as we sing uh, from uh, the hymn, O God, O God of Light and Light, uh, verses 1, 3, and 4. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the gift of Jesus, sent to save us from our sins, with all our hearts and with all our minds, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the holy Christian church, here and scattered throughout the world, and for the proclamation of the gospel and the calling of all to faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the safety of this nation, for our cities and communities, and for the common welfare of us all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For giving us the proper perspective during this busy season, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those in need, for the hungry and homeless, for the widowed and orphaned, and for all those in peril, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the sick and dying, especially those in our church family, and for all those who care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Finally, for these and for all our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Strengthened in God's grace and mercy, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless you and preserve you. Amen.